Today, dear friends, I am going to discuss with you the most important steps a researcher should consider while preparing the questionnaire as one of the methods for data correction. It's true that there are several methods which are used for data correction. However, the common method, which is commonly used, particularly on these social related studies, which do not involve some experiments, of which we call the non-experimental data correction methods. Questionnaire is one of the common methods among researchers. Good enough of the questionnaire is it corrects data from both qualitative and quantitative approach. The questionnaire can be phrased in a form of hard paper or sometimes a soft materials, which is Google Docs. It's from that particular paper, the researcher set up questions from which the respondent will be responding accordingly. However, the proper ways on how to construct the questionnaire, this is one of the challenges, if not a problems, to junior researchers. We tend to ignore some of the important steps and we jump to a certain stage of which we make a big mistakes. And therefore, my today's presentation will take you one step to another and we have tried to group these steps into only eight important steps. Let me take you the pen have tried to summarize into only important steps to consider while undertaking questionnaire preparation for your data correction. But we should understand the decision to the types of questions in a particular questionnaire makes your questionnaire look more seducing versus Overdose. The modalities, the kind of the question that you will be designing in your questionnaire will be more useful for attracting for the respondent to respond it without some sort of boredom. But the poor, the construction of the questions will lead into a poor approaching and responding to the respondents in such a way that some lost respondent, they will just be responding without even understanding what is the message in. Rather, just answering to make sure that they have answered it, your questionnaire. So before we go into these important steps, I would like to subscribe to my YouTube if this is your first time to meet with me in this particular free education channel and then let's go to the next steps there are some important steps as i said that we needed to take into consideration in the process when we are preparing our questionnaire for acquisition of a particular data in our study as i said we have several methods the instruments which are used in data correction and the decisions of this particular method will depend on several factors. One of which it might be the philosophy of the study, the nature of the study, the approach of the study, the de design of the study, and the purpose of your study. These are some of the factors that may decide on which particular ways, on method or instrument for data correction could be fitting your study. Some of this method for social related studies, as I said, which are non-experimental in nature, we have the questionnaire, we have the interview, we have observation, personal construct, role of playing, focus group discussion, historical trend analysis, focus group discussion, documentation, survey, and other more studies. We are going to focus on the questionnaires and the ways on how we can prepare it in a and acceptable ways. 
What is questionnaire anyway? Because we might be speaking of questionnaire, but some are new to this technology. Generally, when you speak of the questionnaire, this is one of the common methods which is used in the data correction. And it is a device used for scoring answers to questions by, by using forms from which the respondent will be filling. Depending on the type of questions in a provided form, there are different types of questionnaire. This criteria of classifying questionnaire depends on the types of the types of the question being employed in a particular questionnaire. We have the so-called closed open ended questionnaire. We have scaled data questionnaire. We have the cotomals questionnaire. We have multiple choice question questionnaire. We have the range ordering questionnaire. We have the rating scale questionnaire, constant sum questionnaire, ratio data questionnaire, matrix questionnaire, contingence questionnaire, filter and branches questionnaire, etc. etc. These are some of the types of questions that are within the questionnaire, and therefore they may determine the type of questionnaire that a researcher is employing in his study. And therefore, I am going to discuss some of this in a proper way. So let's now go dialect, what we call, how do we plan for preparation of a good questionnaire? Then apart from the prior information and biodata of the questionnaire, because questionnaire has some sections. We have the section A, which employs some biodata, some physical information, the study area and whatever, of which you may find the location of the start, the age of the respondent, education level, marital status, sex, etc. These are what we call the bioinformation information data or the primary preliminary information. On its content, when we go to the objectives of your study, of which we, we, we call it not the content based information, the following are the important steps in the preparations of the questionnaire. First, you have your own objectives. And it's from these objectives where you are intending to secure some information so that to answer the question that you had in your study. And therefore, first steps, we have eight steps. The first steps is to make decisions of the purpose of the questionnaire. But what is the purpose of this questionnaire? To get the purpose of the questionnaire, this will be reflected from the objectives or the, the research questions. From the research questions or the research objectives is where you will come up with the determinations of the purpose of the questionnaire. Here, we simply change the general purpose or set up the purpose into a concrete researchable field about which the data can be gathered. Let me take you this an example. Suppose one of your objective was to explore teachers' view about in-service training, that you are intending to initiate a particular in-service training to teachers. That was one of your objectives. And then from this particular objectives, you are to change these objectives into what to obtain what we call a detailed descriptions about the course. Now, you want to get detailed information about how this in-service training program would learn about. Therefore, from this detailed information, automatically you will come up with a lot of parameters, variables to be discussed or to acquire some answers from the respondents. After you have already narrowed down the general purpose of your study into some specified elements 
of which you need to create some questions on it to acquire some information. That will be the first steps. The second step is to identify those particular parameters. You make items over them such that you make subduction of the topic, you make some construction of some concept or issues which relate to the central purpose of your study. For instance, when we take on our above example, the training, the in-service training, from which you can now recognize or identify the items that you need to work on it. For instance, you start looking on the type of course to be offered on that particular training service. The content of the course, what would be the content of the course. You should also decide on the location of the course, the times of the course, and designing of this course. How will be the financial of that particular course and the entry qualification. Now, these are some of the items that will be answering most of the information related to in-service training. But over this in-service training, what are the type of course should be given? What are the content of this course? What, how depth of the contents? What about the horizontal relate and vertical relationship of these courses? What could the relationship on the Broom's taxonomy on the course, the level of understanding? So all these steps, that the second step, you simply identify and list them. These are the types of information that I want to know before introduction of this particular course. And therefore, it's from these items, identified items, now they will be reflecting the kind of questions that you will now make in your questionnaire. The second steps, after you have identified the items, you start now formulating a specific information requirement relating to each of the items identified in A above, in two above. Suppose one of the agent or the parameter was duration of the course. Now you start preparing some specific information. What will be the duration of the course? One meeting, several meeting, one week, one month, a term based, or year. Now this will be one of the areas that will be directing you to the construction of the question. For issues related to the status of the course, will this the course be non-awarding? Should it be awarded type of course? With which now will it awarded with a certificate, diploma, degree, postgraduate, or what kind of award will be given to this course? Okay, within the particular course, there is an issue of orientation of the course. Will it be theoretic oriented, which involve lecture, the readings, etc., or will it be practical oriented that will involve some workshop? production of curriculums and other materials of the same. So these are some of the issues that you start doing before you go to the, 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 the next step of which most of the young researchers jump on it, which is the step number four. Step number four, this is now related to what we call decide on the kind of questions or measurable parameters to be required in your study. This is one of the sections from which most of researchers ignore the first the stage number one, stage number two, and the stage number three, and come to this stage number four, of which this is the big mistake we do. Now, stage number four comes after you have already gone through stage number one, stage number two, and the stage number three. And then you come out to the stage number four. This is the only the point where now you start deciding the kind of question that you are going to use in your questionnaire to a particular specified of parameters in the three above. For instance, we have several types of questions. I will show you some of which they might be a 
applicable in any kind of questionnaire. We have the so-called dichotomous questions. These are the kind of questions which have the, on, the choice, the, the alternative of two questions, two respondents, where the respondent could choose only one. Dichotomous means two, die, two. For example, some question will require the answer of either yes or no. Some question will, answer, will require either this, to speak about the elementary or the secondary. Type of course may be vocation or non-vocation. Performance, maybe you speak of just passive or fair. This is the kind of dichotomous question. The other kind of question could be multiple choice questions, of which the respondent has the ability to select only one among the given alternatives from which he finds could be the relevant according to his observation and understanding. For instance, maybe a lengthy, maybe eight to one, one to five, number of years in teaching, one to five, six to, 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 to 14, 15 to 24, 25 and plus. Therefore, the respondent could, could simply select one. Another kind of question is what we call link ordering question. Link ordering question, they resemble to multiple choice questions. However, under ranking ordering question, they provide some priority in such a way that all the given questions are okay. However, this one is, seems to be more preferable by a respondent than this one. But on multiple choice, only one could be good than the other. Okay, I've gone far. Under this particular phenomena, for instance, this enables degrees of preference on the intensity. For instance, please indicate your priority by pressing number in the boxes to indicate the ordering of your view. If one is standing for the highest priority, two, the second highest priority, and so on. In such a way that number one being for the most important and number five being for the least important. Therefore, the respondent will simply select the priority of his interest. That is, these are some of the questions within the questionnaire. The other questions, types of question, under step number four, we call rating scale. Most of researchers, they understand it by the name of the so-called leakage scale. Under this particular situation, the respondent is given some numbers with its implication and therefore will be given an, a free choice to take or to select for a particular number with its meaning given in a particular row. For instance, all students should have access to free high education. Then number one, strong agree. Two, disagree. Three, neither agree nor disagree. Four, agree. Five, strong agree. So a student will respond on a particular, the respondent, not a student, sorry. The respondent will respond accordingly to the formality on how this has been constructed in the questionnaire. The five steps, types of question is what we call ratio data question. This is also one of the question which are more available on the type of question. You might be reading this question in a particular questionnaire and you do not understand that there are different type of questions within a single questionnaire. A single questionnaire can handle a variety of questions depending on the intentions of the question and the parameter identified in steps number three. These are the ratio data question. This type of question appears in the ratio related with some numerical information in it. For instance, how many marks did you score in a mathematical test? So a respondent here will be required just to fill maybe 20 marks. How old are you in years? Maybe I'm 17 years old. Here, no fixed answer or categories is provided. 
and the respondent puts a numerical answer to fit his figure. This enable average, computation of standard deviation, averaging, length, and therefore you can go to higher level of statistical manipulation, such as formulation of some regression and factor analysis, structural and formulation of equational and mathematical modeling of which we do while doing forest related studies. These are some of the questions of which a researcher could select one or use eight of these depending on the nature of his study parameter. After you have gone through the decision of the kind of the question that will be the, the question that will be involved to a particular parameter identified in, in step number three, then you come to step number five. Step number five is nothing, rather it is a point where now you write the questionnaire items. Simply the questionnaire based on your objectives. You list them and you write them. Then you go to step number six, check that each issue from step number three has been addressed using several items for each issues. Meaning, if you have a particular age, you should have to create several subsections on it so that you will come up with a variety of information to a particular issue. And then after which, you go to step number seven. This is the piloting of your questionnaire. This is now a stage you have already formulated now your questionnaire. You have it with you. You try to do a piloting that you provide these questions to a certain group of people based on the number you can do five, ten, whatever number of people who are around you, and then you ask them to answer on that particular questionnaire, and then they will give up. And when you go through that particular questionnaire, you can realize that they are, there is a, some question that they are providing difficult for respondents to respond. And therefore, you can refine the items as possible as you can until it becomes proper for being implemented into, it, the, uh, into your uh, study. After which you go to the step number eight, which now you administer the final questionnaires to your study. So following these eight important steps in the process of creating and the formulating of the questionnaire, automatically your questionnaires will look very nice, will be good, and they will pr provide the relevant information that you deserve and that you wanted to answer to your question, to your objectives. Now with this simple video on this a highlight, I say thank you for your times. I ask you once again, please remember to subscribe my YouTube and then you turn up the notification so that wherever I upload and, and even on it, you will be at first times to get and acquire it. With this particular scenario, I say thank you for your time. Welcome next time.